uh, we have almost completed the course on uh, power quality and i'll present to you some case studies and uh, we will see how you can do an audit or how you can zero in on the power quality issue so i have picked up a couple of good case studies to um, illustrate to you about the issues so this is uh, a case study which i have taken um, presented by frank sinicola this is a first case study so let us see what is the um, system so there is a building and uh, it is supplied by three phase four wire 120 by 208 volts because some gadgets may operate at 120 and some around 208 volts it's a four wire system and supplied by the local utility so in the building in the premise there are two 500 kva transformers and they step up the voltage to 480 volts so there are two step up transformers and in one of the floors upper floors again these 480 volts is stepped down to 120 or 208 volts whenever required for the end use utilization so there are step up transformers and there are also step down transformers now the utility uh, the management felt that there was some issue with the step up transformers and they asked the utility to make an investigation. So the investigation was carried out for one unit and the same methodology will apply for all the units also. So what are the findings which the uh, inspecting team observed? The first is the drop of the transformer is slightly bowed, curved, slightly. And the paint is peeling off and it is discolored at the top of the cooling vents. So all these are indicative of heating. You know, when you heat, the metal will slowly bend, paint will, paint will peel off, get discolored. But then they observed, so normally one, one common cause for overheating is overloading. But they found that the transformers were loaded to less than 25%. So overloading was not the issue. And uh, so this, this was all by observation only. So on further investigation, they found that th the middle face was noisy. Okay. And then they went for an intra infrared, that is a thermal testing and uh, observed that the middle phase, the temperature was in excess of 90 degrees centigrade. So for the loading condition, it should have been around 50 degrees centigrade. So it was much higher than what should have been practically. So this elevated heat is the one which uh, caused all these problems. That's what, that was the observation of the inspection team. Then they again found the harmonics. Another, another reason for Heating normally is the presence of harmonics, but harmonics was also within limit. So you rule out the heating due to overloading because it's not overloaded and due to harmonics because harmonics is also within the limits. So then they came to the conclusion that this is not actually a power quality problem. It is just a problem of poor maintenance. There is no call, power quality issue. So the inspection team suggested some measures. You clean the top and bottom endings of the winding assemblies and the ventilating ducts and do a thorough vacuum cleaning of the transformer windings. And uh, you can use uh, dry compressed air or even nitrogen uh, is very good for cleaning. And all the supports, terminal boards and insulating surfaces should be all wiped out with a dry clean cloth, lint free. The lint will stick, okay? And liquid cleaners are not recommended because you have a problem with liquid cleaners. They may be inflammable. They are generally inflammable. Okay. So this is, a, this is a case which looked like a power quality problem existed, but actually there was no PQ problem. Okay. This is the first case. 
and uh, they also recommended checking on the taps the taps on the downstream and the upstream should match there is a step up and step down transformers they must be matched this was the recommendation now we'll take one more case study this is from a paper i have quoted the reference of the paper the isen number so this was a case reported of equipment malfunctioning very nice case so there were several customers uh, connected to a local substation who complained of some problems one household said that their tv set gave an audible noise and uh, uh, automated coffee maker did not work properly and there was a hairdresser who said that suddenly the hair dryers would automatically stop and start uh, many times a day this was another problem reported and uh, third a small uh, industry which had installed a cnc numerical machine numerically controlled computer and numerically controlled machine it showed periodic malfunctions so all these form uh, you know customers on the same network so they started taking measurements the inspection team took measurements as per the en50160 standards and uh, at each of the customer terminals and there were no problems related as such they could not make out any anything exceeding so this is how the layout is you can see here this is the incoming supply and these numbers show the distance uh, between these buses in meters so this is load 1 whose tv was malfunctioning and this is the hairdresser and this is the industry with the cnc uh, machine so this is how they were and uh, there were measurements these so this yellow what is shown in yellow is uh, you know the people who complained and this abc are all where measurements were taken so measurements appear to be within limits now when we measure harmonics normally your instrument has a limited frequency that means you can say it's a 20 kilohertz instrument that means it can measure signals up to 20 kilohertz okay. so i'm sure you would have studied in the harmonic chapter that sometimes the harmonics may not be large but uh, you know they can add up to a large amount small small amounts can add up to a large rms value so in spite of see feeling that the, you know all measurements were within limits they found the inspection team found that the problems still persisted problems were present so what they did they did additional measurements okay using a higher frequency um analyzer frequency analyzer so up to 40 kilohertz they observed and when they used this instrument they found that at site c just look at this layout the site c is at the extreme end of the radial network there was emission of 8 kilohertz so we spoke about any emission that is responsible for causing the problem so this at this point there was an 8 kilohertz emission and the cause of this was a cnc machine which was installed at site b that is where the third customer that is the industry was located and the cnc machine was fed with an active converter and this converters i told you you know this power electronic converter does cause loss of harmonics so they they had installed the converter without any filters so that was the reason for this 8 kilohertz you know being emitted current you basically have currents of uh, that frequency and that caused all the problems upstream and downstream okay so first what they did they recommended an emc uh, filter to reduce the emission to around one third of what it was without filter so some standard filters are available in the market we can just install that these are not designed exactly for your network right 
so they may not be very effective but definitely they are better than a case without the filter so they these are called as generic filters that means filters available by vendors which has some standard specifications so they just installed a generic filter it reduced the emission to one third but still some customers were feeling the uh, interference so there was still some malfunctioning of equipment so what they did they installed designed and installed a specific filter to reduce the emission at 8 kilohertz that is the meaning of a specific filter because the emission was 8 kilohertz now look at what happened so you see the first you look at the figure here so this is at site c these are the voltage in the, in the ryb lines uh, for high frequency high frequency rms values it was high around 3 4 and 5 volts now with a generic filter it came down with a generic filter it came down to around 1.5 and 1 and 1.2 volts and with a specific filter this came down to less than 1 volt so this is the solution so you see in a power quality problem first what you have to do you have to observe the visible problems like transformer is getting heated and equipment is mal mal tripping a line is getting outaged often right there's a capacitor burn capacitors are burning out failing so you have to observe what is the visible problem and then go to the cause to go to the cause you have to go through measurements so what type of measurements we make so normally we make you know rms values and harmonics these are the two common measurements so using frequency analyzers and uh, meters we try to measure and then you try to come up with the exact location of the problem see the problem is in site c but it is felt in site a and b so that is important you have to locate the exact location of the problem after that come up with some mitigating solution so if it's a problem of harmonics it would be filter you have studied you can have active filters passive filters right and if it is a voltage uh, problem you can install some ups temporarily uh, for that period or you can have a dynamic voltage regulator or you can have a stat form the stat form and so on this is the second one uh the third one again uh, i have taken it from power meters uh, case studies so this was a pharmaceutical company in, based in dublin and they had two power quality uh, analyzers so installed on the lv side of their two incoming uh, supplies 10 kv supplies so there were some critical sags sags were ex, uh, you know experienced now the utility said that there is no problem from their side the sag is not due to the utility right so there are two supplies right two so one of them showed that there was a problem with the incoming supply and the other one showed that there was a problem on the load side so this was the issue i think you got it there are two lines coming to a, a company it's a, it was a pharmaceutical company so one there were two analyzers one analyzer pointed out that the problem of the voltage sag is on the utility side and uh, from the another an analyzer it appeared as if it was on the load side so investigations were held and finally what happened was in one of the lines there was a large load connected which was generating the large inrush current inrush means at the time of starting which was causing a deep sag so because of the sag the supply to this load was also disturbed and the power analyzer connected there recognized this okay but the voltage sag that the current was so high that at the pcc also the voltage sag and therefore for the other other supply there is the load is fine right see i have two lines here the load is connected the problematic load so this power quality analyzer will see see this as the problem okay so this says correctly that the problem is with the load but because of this large current the voltage at the pcc also sags so now i have another line here which is getting supply from the pcc the load is proper on that so it will see that as a supply problem though actually it is not a supply problem so you see with this power quality what is what you have to keep in mind is 
what is apparent is not the actual cause. That is why measurements are very important and you have to go to the key issue of the problem. And uh, in uh, Namibia, from 15 substations uh, over a period, some data was uh, collected. And I just want to show you because it's of interest. So it has a mixture of many uh, loads. So they found that power quality issues, 22% of the time, uh, it arose from mining. There were a lot of mining operations. And uh, hospitals, banks and all, they were very good. They never initiated any kind of power quality problems. Manufacturing sectors, they contributed to about 22% of the problems. And residential buildings, that is the loads which are present in the residential buildings, like your AC or LEDs, TVs, etc. Those contributed to around 11%. And non-residential buildings, that is commercial spaces, et cetera, they contributed around 11%. And there were some other which were around 34%. And these are the different substations and how many PQ disturbances were there. So now if you see at one or, one or two of the substations, there are large power quality disturbances. So here there's 5,000 and or and here 2,000 and or. So they have to now go to those substations and take up the network from that substation and find out what is the cause, just like how we did in the other case studies, okay? So I presented these case studies to illustrate to you how in a practical situation, we make an assessment of the power quality uh, disturbances and uh, we come up with the root cause and come up with mitigating solutions. Thank you.